gonna drive a car called the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness, it makes sense to come to one of the most glorious states in all of them, in the United States of these Americas. I'm here in Utah, I'm basically knocking on the back door of Zion National Park, and my mind is blown by two things. How beautiful, how mind-bendingly beautiful this is, and then the other thing is how good this Crosstrek Wilderness is. All right, so it's no surprise that Subaru would be applying the wilderness formula to the Crosstrek. For the models that already come with the wilderness, you know, the Outback and the Frontier, one in five of them is a wilderness trip. People are spending the money to get the more capable versions of those vehicles. One in five, 20%. That is a phenomenal take rate. And it's, it's like printing money at this point. And with the Crosstrek, it's gonna be at least that, at least that's what Subaru is predicting, and they're not wrong. It will be at least 20% of Crosstrek buyers opting for the wilderness version because the people who buy this wanna take them on adventures. And with the wilderness, you're getting a version that's just that more capable. And this one is priced very well. So what does it have over the regular Crosstrek? <clears throat> Besides, you know, the little anodized copper accents on the outside, you get all terrains. You get Yokohama Geolander all terrains on 18 inch tires. And those are a great compromise all terrain in that they're quiet on road. The on road driving manners are nice. And then it's still an all terrain and can do all terrain type things off road as I literally turn onto the dirt. So you got decently capable tires with the symmetrical all-wheel drive system. And then you get dual X mode, which is Subaru's torque vectoring magic system that helps this thing scramble up hills. And there's hill descent control. The steering feel is very nice. The chassis design is nice. This gets taller uh, springs than the standard cars, taller shocks. So it sits higher. You get 9.3 inches of ground clearance, which is better ground clearance than a lot of what would seemingly be far more capable vehicles. This is more ground clearance than a Defender 110. It has more ground clearance than the regular Bronco. Not just the, Bron not just the Bronco Sport Badlands, the regular Bronco. That's crazy uh, in this compact, tall wagon. So it can do more than you think it can do. And I was shocked at the off-road course that they put us on in this thing. Going up, going down, going over stuff, scrambling up hills uh, easily. It, it could do it effortlessly. It was really good. I mean, it, if this thing had true four-wheel drive low, if it had a real transfer case, this thing would be the mountain goat of mountain goats. But it's fun on the soft, slidey stuff, just like it is on the slow moving stuff. It's not a rock crawler. It's not a Wrangler Rubicon. So you're not gonna do crazy things, but for what, it's designed to do, it does it exceptionally, exceptionally well. And then it's comfortable inside and you get this nice 11.6 inch center screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There's a decent sound system. This has the upgraded uh, 10 speaker Harman Kardon sound system that's upgraded to the power moonroof. So this one is nicely loaded with power moonroof, 10 way adjustable driver's seat and the Harman Kardon sound system. And it's $35,000 as tested from a base price of about $32,000 once you factor in destination and handling. 35 grand for the top spec cross trek that can do tons. And then it also has an upgraded trans cooler. It has a beefier rear differential. Um, so you can tow 3,500 pounds with this one. You can do, like I said, it's, sh it's almost shocking what you can do with this thing. This is a really good car and basically Bend, Oregon is gonna be flooded with these with mountain bikes on the roof and tents and all that stuff because it also has 700 pounds static load capable up top. I think it's 160 dynamic load. Um, but either way, it's neat that they tell you the load rating for the roof rack up there. I'm, I've logged a serious amount of miles in this thing all over Utah, including through Zion National Park, which is again, a mind bending experience if you've never been. This is my second time and it's just as amazing as you imagine it to be. Now I'm cruising on some roads outside of Zion. There's Flying Monkey Mesa in the distance, which has an amazing history, which you should Google and look that up. And then there's just tons of BLM land, which makes me want to come back in my Montero and camp here and just have the most amazing views with random cows running by in the distance. It's a beautiful place and, and I'm experiencing it in a vehicle that is perfectly suited to what I'm doing here. 
Under the hood, we have a 2.5 liter boxer engine making 182 horsepower and 178 pound-feet of torque. And of course, it's backed up by a CVT. Uh, I'm blown away by how much I've enjoyed this. I've liked every iteration of the wilderness. And I'm here to say that even with that, what sounds like an underpowered engine and a you know, CVT is not the most exciting gearbox, Subaru really makes the most of it. Uh, they swapped out the final drive on this from 3.7 to a 4.11 Outback, and it gets a little bit more punch off the line because of that. It manages the torque better when you're off-roading. And then the gearbox has simulated manual mode, so you can put it into a manual mode and drive it and hold gears or gear ratios off-road. Subaru put a lot of thought into this thing, and it shows, and I mean, this thing, I gotta tell you, this thing is a home run. This blue color is nice. The green color is fantastic. The white looks good covered in dirt. It's a good red. <laughs> I just find myself really enjoying what Subaru is doing these days because they, they stand behind what they say in terms of their brand alignment and the people they support, the animal rescue stuff they support. You know, I foster dogs, so. I, it's, it's amazing that I don't own a Subaru. I love off-roading, I love mountain biking, I love dogs. How do I not have one of these in my driveway already? I don't know, because I also love my Montero. Um, but it'd be nice to have a modern car uh, <laughs> after a certain long road trips. So I gotta tell you, this thing is a hit. I'm rambling on because like this road, I'm just enjoying rambling down it. It's this dirt road where you can just kind of fling the car around and the geolanders are happy to oblige and hold up and there's a little bit of a slide and it catches because it's an all-wheel drive system. You don't need traction control on. You can just kind of screw around and have an absolute blast in this car. I want to drive it like a rally car driver, but I know there's more Subarus coming this way. Uh, I was the first one back to home base after lunch because maybe I was enjoying the car a little too much um, and having a damn good time, but that's what you do in this car. So if you were thinking about buying a Crosstrek, just get the Wilderness. Um, it's it's the most expensive one, but it's only a few grand more than the Limited, and it's it's more capable thanks to the under, the stuff you can't see. Yeah, you could slap a set of tires and wheels onto one, and you'd get part of the way there, but you're not getting the powertrain enhancements. You're not swapping in uh, new gearing out back, you're not getting the taller springs. I mean, you might do that, but the amount of work and cost required to, to do that, def you j just buy this one. Because um, you're going to spend way more than the price difference between the other options in the Crosstrek family to here. This car is a home run. And if you live in an area where people buy a lot of Subarus, expect to see a shit ton of these.